Hey guys, listen, about 70 to 80% of the people right now that have IBS or IBD also have a condition called SIBO. And what the research is showing us is that in many cases, the reason that they have the IBS or the IBD is because they indeed have this infection. So you've got to be asking them, what is SIBO? Well, SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. What that means is that your intestines, your small intestines have become infected with this bacteria. Now we all have this bacteria in our stomachs, but what can happen to some people is that the bacteria can overtake the system and start to cause more and more health issues. Now, some of the common symptoms with SIBO are bloating. That's where people feel uncomfortable after they eat, especially within 30 minutes after eating. If somebody's getting this bloating or distension, that's a pretty significant clue. And oftentimes when we talk to these patients, we'll ask them, you know, do you feel like when you go to bed that you look about three months pregnant, but yet when you wake up in the morning, your stomach is flat again? They're like, yes. And then another question we'll ask them too is, have they noticed that even when they're eating healthy foods, for example, brown rice, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, any of these types of fibrous types of vegetables, are they noticing that they're getting bloating? And if they say yes, that's another huge clue as well. These patients can also have constipation or diarrhea, depending which type of SIBO they have can depend what type of symptoms they'll have. We also will notice that these patients will get nauseous after they eat, where they, they feel unwell or they have chronic feelings of unwellness. And the best way to explain that is if somebody has an infection, for example, if they have a cold or a virus or a flu, they're gonna feel achy and lethargic. Well, unfortunately, many people are walking around with these infections in their guts and feel chronically unwell. And they go to their doctors, they complain, they say, I have this bloating, this digestion, this gas, this constipation. And the doctor labels it with IBS or IBD, but not realizing the reason they don't feel so well is because of these chronic infections. Also with SIBO, people are gonna have fatigue because once again, the immune system is overactive. It's always attacking the bacterial infection or the overgrowth. Also, people are gonna have fatigue because they start to become nutritional deficient because the bacteria starts eating more of the foods than the body's able to absorb and assimilate. These patients will also start to experience cracking or weakening of the nails. They'll also start to experience brain fog because of the toxins and the chemicals that are released from the bacteria in the stomach can affect the brain. And then also these toxins can interfere with hormonal regulation. So in many cases, people start to have digestive problems. And if not treated properly over several months or several years, they'll start to have more and more hormonal issues. Because once again, those nutrients that we're supposed to be getting from the foods can help regulate our hormones. And then the toxins that are released from the bacteria in the stomach can also interfere and uh, get in the way of those receptor sites for the hormones and can interfere with hormone function. So the good news and the bad news. The bad news is that SIBO typically doesn't clear up on its own. Many patients try a FODMAP diet where they get rid of certain fermentable foods to see if it will reduce the overgrowth. But if they don't do the proper steps to strengthen their immune system, to take the right kinds of products that can help the body actually purge and eliminate those infections, they don't often get better. And so this is why I'm recommending that you ultimately meet with a good functional medicine doctor. And there are some medical clinics that will also try to address this. Unfortunately, the medical treatment currently for a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth infection is a drug called Rifaxin. And that drug is quite expensive out of pocket and only has about a 51% effectiveness rate. So it's real important, I think, to find a functional medicine doctor that will help you understand and address the contributing factors to SIBO because SIBO in itself isn't the only problem a lot of times what we see with these patients. We can see inflammation, we can see autoimmune disease, we can see other food sensitivities. And ultimately, we need to find out what it is to support that person to help them become healthier so they can actually get over the infection. And so somewhere up or down or sideways or next to us, there's a link. On that link, I have a, an entire article where we outline all the ins and outs of SIBO. So read that article. If it makes sense, schedule a consultation with us. Come in and find out what test that we're going to recommend, and hopefully we can help you put the pieces back together. Until next time, get well, stay well.